Hey guys, I am Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. Coming to you this morning, talk to you about water heaters, gas. Now, the other day we talked about electric water heaters and there's a lot of common parts. So I kind of want to talk to you about them and tell you about them just to kind of let you know. A lot of your common parts are the valve on top, the TMP valve, the temperature and pressure relief valve. Guys, your valve on top, hopefully it's a quarter turn ball valve. If it's a gate valve, we recommend that people don't turn it and operate it to, to close your hot water off that way. In an emergency, it really won't matter, but just to do it to see if it turns your water off. A lot of those old gate valves, the, the spiral on the inside that makes that disc go up and down, if you tighten that down too much, you'll you'll ruin the brass on the bottom and it may not open back up to where you can turn your water back on. So that's a problem that we've run into. We tell our guys, look, if it's a gate valve, don't operate it. Recommend they replace to a full court, full turn or quarter turn, full port ball valve. Guys, a ball valve is a great thing to have on your water heater. It makes turning off your water very simple to do. The other things up on top are your dielectric unions and your dielectric nipples. And what these are for are isolation. So you don't get electrolysis forming between two dissimilar metals. A very big deal. Uh, a lot of the older water heaters where they literally just screwed a copper male adapter into the water heater. You can go back now and look and, and see where those dissimilar metals are eroding away. And, and that's going to cause problems for people. Now, when the cold water comes in, of course, it goes through your ball valve or, or gate valve. It goes through your dielectric nipple, and then it comes into the water heater. Now, from there, it goes into your cold water dip tube. Your cold water dip tube brings that water all the way down to the bottom of your water heater. And the reason being is, especially in a gas water heater, that is where the heating elements are, or, or that is where your heat source is. It, at the bottom of your water heater, where you're right above your burner assembly, it heats up the bottom of that tank, just like a pot on a stove. And that's where you get your hot water. Now, before we get into the burner assembly, let's go back to the, the parts of the water heater. Up on top, you'll see a hex nut going into your tank. That's your anode rod. Now, the anode rod is made out of magnesium, aluminum, or an aluminum zinc compound. And what that is, the anode rod is a sacrificial rod so that as your water heater ages, and, and normally I tell people in the first year, at the end of the first year, change out your anode rod. You can actually almost double the life of your water heater. If, if you've got a good filtration system, a good anti-scaler, and you change out your anode rod, you will be surprised how many years you can actually get out of your water heater. But that anode rod goes down and say that that there is a little tiny pinhole in the glass. Well, instead of the water starting to eat and rust away that tank, what happens is that anode rod will sacrifice itself and that material will go and create a seal on the inside of the tank. So the water never gets to the steel. So anode rods and, and like they call them, they're a sacrificial rod because that rod will give up itself to help protect the inside of your water heater. Now, on the outside of your gas water heater, the different parts that you have are up top. You've got the flue pipe. Now, the flue pipe comes out of the top, goes up all the way out the roof. And what this does, this eliminates the dangerous gases from, from burning the natural gas to heat for your, to heat your water for you. So those gases go up through the center of your water heater. Your water heater actually has a tube in the middle of it. And... There's baffles and ports in there to, to make that water or make that heat stay towards the outside because that creates a larger heating surface and makes your water heater more efficient. So when those gases heat and go up and rise, they are actually still heating your water heater. Then they get up to the top, they go up the chimney, they go up through the flue pipe, they go all the way out the roof into your atmosphere and go away. So your flue pipe, you want to make sure is set properly on the top of your chimney on your water heater. You know, make sure everything's lined up. These keep the dangerous gases out of your house. That flue pipe also needs to be connected re really well. There shouldn't be any holes. There shouldn't be just, you know, duct tape on it or anything like that. So that is one aspect of it. Now, down towards the bottom, 
When you come down the front of your water heater, the first thing you're going to see on the side is your control valve. This is what controls the gas flow to your gas water heater. And this is where if it's a newer one, you're going to have an igniter on it. If it's an old style control valve, you're going to have your, your main gas feed coming out. You're going to have your thermocouple coming out and, and your, your feed for your thermocoupling or for your pilot light. Your thermocoupling is what creates an electric spark. Once you light that pilot, that thermocouple creates an electric energy that tells the gas valve, hey, it's good to go. It's okay to go ahead and send enough gas down here to light the burner assembly because we have flame down here. So that's an old style gas valve now, or control valve. The new style control valves actually have an igniter on it. So, you know, when you go to light that water heater and you press that pilot light, it's got a button on it you push and you actually look through the viewport on the burner assembly. Now the burner assembly itself are the screws on the side where it actually seals off to your tank. These are the new FVIR tanks to where fuel vapors cannot get up in there and cause an explosion. You know, we used to have to put water heaters up on an 18 inch stand out in the garage, anywhere it could be around any dangerous vapors. Now the new FVIR water heaters kind of take care of that. What you want to do though, is when you go to light that water heater, you want to look in that viewport, you want to turn it to pilot, you want to press that button and then you want to pre press that igniter. Look in there, see if you see a spark. If you see a spark, you should also see a flame. If you don't, then you start having problems with either your control valve, your burner assembly, or things like that. Guys, gas water heaters have got much more efficient here lately. Not to say they ever weren't, but in, what, two or three years ago, they, they changed everything to make them more efficient, and that's why water heaters got bigger. If you're changing out your water heater at home yourself, what I recommend is make sure that you measure how big your water heater is and make sure you measure how big your opening is to get it there. Water heaters grew two inches three or four years ago. And what happened then is sometimes we went into places and we said, look, we can't get the same size water heater in here. May have had to take it into a smaller water heater, may have had to change the opening to get it in there. Guys, now we get down to maintenance. If you look down at the bottom of your water heater, you've got a drain valve. If your water heater is just a year or two old, I recommend if you hadn't done it yet, start flushing that water heater. What you do is hook up a short water hose to it, put it in a five gallon bucket, open it up, fill the bucket up, close it, look at all the junk in the bottom of it and go pour that out. Now you're okay to go ahead and pour that down a drain or something, just be careful. Remember that water is very hot and PVC is not made for, for water you know, boiling or anything like that or even up around 140 degrees. Now you can pour it down it. I just recommend turning on some cold water first to the tub, pour your bucket in there and you're okay. What's really smart would be carry it out, pour it in your driveway, pour it down the alley. You know, just remember you could leave some kind of a stain. So be very careful with that. Make sure it's not going to be in an area that if it does leave a stain, you're going to get upset about it. But guys, water heater maintenance should be done at least once a year. If you've got a relatively new water heater and you want to keep it super efficient every couple of months, run that hose into a five gallon bucket, open it, fill it up and close it. I don't recommend closing the valve on top and completely draining it or anything like that. Literally, you can push most of the stuff out of the bottom of your water here, just doing it the way that I'm telling you. Guys, I hope you're enjoying these videos. And if you've ever drained yours or flushed yours or anything like that, let us know about it down in the bottom. Leave us some comments. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. Guys, please let us know what you think. Please let us know if there's anything we can talk about to help you with your plumbing. My name is Roger Wakefield with Texas Green Plumbing, saving you money one drop at a time.